Living and developing uh, climbing areas in Asia for sort of the past 20 years and initially my, my introduction into Asia was Thailand but what makes Hong Kong so unique is its accessibility of the climbing, um, the quality of it, uh, a, a significant enough quantity and the variety with, with you know, such a, uh, an impressive city as a backdrop. Uh, you don't need a car to get to any of these crags. I mean, you know, Monkey Buttress, where we're now, uh, is you know less than five minutes walk out, out of a out of a taxi. So that makes it very unique compared to a lot of other Asian um, places to climb. You know, granite tends to be much cleaner, but then the issue is that it also tends to be, you know, quite blank uh, in the way that volcanic tuff. Um, which is the other dominant rock type here, uh, doesn't suffer the same fate. But then, you know, the, 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 the geological aspect of volcanic tuff is that it's very, very jointed, uh, which means you can get superb, very crisp knife edge edges, but it can also be horribly loose. When I was about sort of 12, 12 years old, uh, I'd save up pocket money and uh, um, pay pay a, uh, a climbing instructor to take me out and that that's how I was able to actually start climbing outdoors you, you just sort of turn up um, uh, sort of six o'clock in the afternoon bearing in mind that you know with the UK being in the northern hemisphere you get long sun summer evenings you know can you lead do you have any gear um, one person would usually turn up with a nine mil rope and the other person would have another and uh, yeah, I mean, like in some respects, it's kind of a miracle most people survive because obviously you don't know whether that person can be lay safely at all or what their ability is like to put in drag gear. And <laughs> I mean, people, you know, these days ask me, oh, you know, how do you put up a new route? And, you know, uh, what are the decisions that influence you? And I guess that was the same sort of questions I had when I was sort of, you know, 14 and I'd gone down the wall one particular day and I happened to um, meet and uh, start climbing with one of the area developers and, and co-authors of the, the Avon and Cheddar guidebook, uh, Gordon Jenkin, that he turned out to be, you know, a really, really good, good mentor. And yeah, that's how I got into the new routing. That's how I learned a lot about the process, the ethics, the considerations and I remember going to a uh, Brandon tool hire and, <laughs> and, and renting this Bosch drill for two days. And uh, it literally took two days to, to drill a, like seven holes or something. Um, I actually used uh, drill pegs back in the day because I didn't know how to uh, put bolts in. When, when you go climbing with, with someone else, you're making decisions that affect just you and yourself. When you equip a sport crag, the, the decisions that you make in that process affect everybody. Um, and also the consequences for that, your own decisions can also boomerang back onto you as well. And that, and that is a real distinction between just going climbing and actually developing. When, when I'm equipping routes, I'm doing it from the point of view of protecting the leader from, from you know, hitting the ground or hitting a ledge. and and really just being able to you know, work a crux and acknowledgement of developers and the history of how, how climbing's evolved in a given location is to me quite important because it, it provides the landscape for why the sport's developed in the way it has. And the, the fact that there wasn't a, a printed guidebook here. Also, you know, it includes a lot of unpublished routes as well and new areas. Focused only on, on sport climbing, it's got to be a proper sport route, so not, not nothing mixed. So, you know, if you need trad gear along with some, there's some bolts on it, yeah, it's a mixed route. It's, I also wanted to check every single route that went into the guide that meant abseiling all the individual lines getting bulk count for each route and actually sort of dropping a tape down to get an accurate sort of pitch length you know really providing sort of quite sort of detailed holistic information and then combining that with a sort of topo style but an also old school 
kind of trad guy style as well. Yeah. I mean, people may not know about, you know, the bomb at Black Crag and, yeah, and it went off with quite a bang the next day, apparently. So, uh, yeah, you know, that's what new routing has given me, the, the fun of developing a new area and, oh yeah, people are gonna love this one and, uh, and, and sharing that with other people. Oh, it's great, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's the same feeling you get when, you know, you go on an overseas climbing trip and you turn up in a crowd and go, oh, wow, you know, like, what's that line? And, you know, you, you're straight to the guidebook and you want to find a, and then it's like, oh, yeah, it's AP plus, oh, all right, you know, <laughs> you know, whatever. But it's great when it turns out to be a 60 plus or like something else, you know, climb on. <laughs>